Crypto Mastery class. Got a little late start here today. Apologize. Uh, we had a whole bunch of snow here last night in Washington, D.C. And had to shovel some snow. So uh, 20 minutes ago, I was doing just that. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. And I'm um, going to get started here in a moment, pulling up some news. We're going to look at some charts. We're going to cover all the bases. And uh, I'm sorry, I need to just share a link with somebody and uh, who's going to join the class. And um, give me two seconds on that here. And let's see. Okay. There we go. Sorry. Any questions, you guys? Welcome, everyone, by the way. I see Rick, some familiar names, uh, people in our inner circle and our M3 classes, KS, Joe, Stephen, F. Green, Alex, David. If you'd like to find out more on how to join these classes live, just go to moonstream.io. And you can sign up for these free weekly classes on Tuesdays where we unpack the markets and talk about our custom indicators, how we read these markets. You can also sign up for free things down below, free newsletter, free crypto training, and uh, also the Trader Success Checklist, which is also uh, helpful for many people. We'll go over that today. And... Uh, Okay, so I just need to invite somebody to the class here. Okay, very good. All right, lots going on in the markets here. How's everyone doing? Uh, let's uh, dive right into the news. I do have charts pulled up, and we're going to unpack everything. And I was doing a lot of research here this morning. So, you know, what's going on? Um, firm believer, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And, um, you know, we've had, we, it did exactly as we've been saying for weeks. Uh, we, Bitcoin pushed right up to that golden pocket, the 0.618 retracement. And um, right at 48,500. So we'll look at that. It sold off. We'll talk about why it sold off. And so um, let's see. This is interesting. Let's, I always pull this up because we want to have the most timely news for you guys. Mark Yusko saying that uh, the ETF for Ethereum may take longer than we thought. So we'll dive into that. And let's see. <clears throat> so let's see. It's billions of dollars in reserve of claims, BlackRock. Yeah, so BlackRock wanting to follow up, so we'll, we'll unpack that. I think that's really important. I'm looking for the most important news, and we're going to just get a feel for everything else that's happening and uh, not everything else. I know you guys can't see my screen yet. Let me do that right now. And over to uh, Crypto Panic. So anyway, I'll uh, go up in the corner here. So good aggregator for news, CryptoPanic.com. Uh, we'll look at Daily HODL. We'll look at a bunch of other things, spend about 20, 30 minutes on the news, and uh, we'll go from there. So Grayscale moves another 9K in Bitcoin. So basically Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is selling their Bitcoin, um, not necessarily for nefarious reasons themselves. They are, uh, their users had a lot of theory, sorry, had a lot of Bitcoin locked up in the trust that they couldn't sell for a long time. Finally, they're able to sell that. So we're seeing a combination of, we'll just jump over the chart so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. And um, <clears throat> pardon me. We'll jump over to these charts. Let's see. I wanted, I've got two of these open here. Which ones? No, I want to go to these. So basically on the Bitcoin chart, let's see DXY. So DXY is pushing up. That's another issue we have here. DXY pushing up and uh, that pushes Bitcoin down. So we'll take a quick look at that. And let's see, uh, I've got that on another chart here. Got it all queued up for you, believe it or not. So DXY pushing up, not good for Bitcoin. I'm surprised to see this and that much of a move on the dollar index. And so <clears throat> that would normally um, indicate lower Bitcoin. A very unusual sort of divergence happening here because on Bitcoin, we actually pushed up a little bit today. And the reason is, and this is key, is that the all the future, all the uh, spot ETF uh, transactions, these are these take a few days to settle. So that's a TLDR. If you're just here and all you have time for is what's going on, why didn't the prices push up higher? With the ETF again, uh, the people that were locked into GBTC, a lot of the selling was from the uh, GBTC side, whereas there was a lot of inflows of buying on the other 
ETFs, uh, BlackRock namely, but uh, those transactions haven't really settled yet. It usually takes two days or so. Yesterday was a holiday. So we had Thursday, the uh, ETF was announced, sorry, Wednesday, and then Thursday, they could start trading. So two days, Wall Street days would have been today. So we're seeing a little bounce here, but it's a weak bounce. Um, and we've had these lines drawn on our charts for some time now, push right up to that that Fibonacci golden pocket, right at 48K to the nose, to the dollar, and then sold off. And, um, you know, this is healthy for the market. We'll come back to this. Uh, this is a TLDR real quick. So uh, let me jump back over to the news. Let's start there. If you guys do have any questions, uh, I have the chat open as well. And uh, special welcome to our Moonstream M3 and Retire Rich Inner Circle members. You can see that's our Thursday class where we unpack emerging markets, etc. And uh, our M3 class is tomorrow where we really dive deeper into all this we're talking about today. So let's see. Don't see too much more in here that uh, is is uh is very timely so let's take a look at uh, overall coin desk bitcoin traders i support 48k yeah 38k to 40k would be the next logical support and uh let's see all right cnbc not the best news currency port soars kathy wood always in the news permeable and uh, we have this Coindesk article there. So I think I already had that open. So let's go down the road. We don't have that much news today. Sometimes we have more than others. That gives us more time to talk about what's going on. So um, yeah, Grayscale, GBTC moves another 9K Bitcoin to exchange in preparation for sale. Again, there's a lot of holders that got into the Grayscale Bitcoin trust early because there was no ETF yet. And they have been unlocking, they're finally able to sell. And uh, most of that is at a profit, not all of it, but people just want out uh, largely because the other ETFs have much lower fees. And if you don't know, usually the ETF fee battle and war doesn't start till, you know, a little bit later after they announce it later in the year and right out of the gate because the total volume on this ETF blew all records of all any ETF ever released. So uh, we said expect volatility. I certainly had that. And as predicted, uh, we pushed higher on the news, sold off on the news. And the question is, where do we go next? We're going to look at that too. Um, but really what a lot of the sell pressure is the locked up Bitcoin holders wanting to sell, sort of get out of these markets, maybe put it into the ETF and probably maybe not the Grayscale bit, uh, ETF from the trust. So it didn't automatically convert. And so that's going to take a few days. Bottom line is all that money has to be settled first. And sometimes it has to go through the brokerage account. So the money that was sold last week hasn't sort of landed in people's accounts to reallocate yet. Now Bitcoin's getting down. Likely people are sitting there saying, okay, maybe I should sit out for a little bit and see what happens. So um, all of this is normal markets go in cycles. And I have a chart where we've been watching that and uh, talking about that. I'll pull that up shortly and uh, why we could see a 20, 30 percent pullback here. And that would still be healthy. All right. So here we have the uh, Bitcoin on the um, <clears throat> screen here. Let's see, I'm going to skin down on the news just to unpack this a bit. The GBTC sent additional 9,000 to the exchange Tuesday. So that's likely, usually you see coins moving to exchanges to sell uh, and vice versa. When people are getting ready to hodl, they take it off the exchange and into their hard wallets, et cetera. And not always, but uh, often that's the case. So GBTC sold 2,000 Bitcoin last week. That is now risen to 11,000 and taken their holdings. Now they have 610,000 Bitcoin. So this has to have an impact. Uh, the Now there is a question of, is this going to directly affect price on all of it? The answer is no. There is something called the OTC market. If you're not familiar, that's over the counter where crypto and Bitcoin, Ethereum specifically can be sold off the exchanges. So it's sort of similar to the old days when you got stock certificate, the bearer shares, and if you owned those, whoever had the physical shares owned the stock, it wouldn't affect prices on the exchanges on Wall Street. So along the way, they largely got rid of the bearer shares. But think of Bitcoin and over the counter as sort of bearer shares. So, you know, if you had, say, 1,000 or 2,000 Bitcoin, you could put it on the OTC market and do an off exchange sale and buy. That doesn't affect directly. It doesn't affect the prices. The prices are on the exchanges. 
And that's why you'll see slight variations on different exchanges. There's some uh, arbitrage opportunities there that are mostly minor, but that's how uh, good old uh, Sam uh, Bankman fraud uh, got started with Alameda. He was arbitraging Bitcoin on different exchanges, making a million dollars a day. And uh, essentially, so I just want you to understand that. But here's the point, though. As the OTC reserves stop uh, sort of dwindle, then the buying and selling will be more on the exchanges and more more likely to affect price. But I will say this, that the old days of massive movements on Bitcoin over the weekend will be largely gone soon. A lot of it will be controlled by through these Wall Street uh, instruments with ETFs. So the good news and the bad news is for us traders, the volatility over time with the CTF should diminish. And um, I think for most investors, that's a positive thing. Well, you'll see the trends even smooth out more than we've seen in the past. Certainly 2021 was a very volatile year, had a great first half of the year, and then a huge dump in the summertime. And also in that December going into the bear market. So anyway, um, just so you understand this, that um, over the next couple of weeks, we should see additional selling of the GBTC holdings, some of that over the counter. But I think retail also is selling into the news and also institutions. Yeah, the uh, People predicted the sell the news type of event, which we were saying for months here because of this large upward trend channel on Bitcoin. And certainly there's Garrett, good old Gary Gensler uh, to spoil the party. But uh, my friend Scott says, bigger the party, bigger the hangover. So we had a great party here all the way from the lows here, which we forecasted all the way back in this region when things were about 30,000. I forecasted, predicted 16.5. We went down here. We had our rocket indicator. All of our signals were firing. And this is one of our newer crypto mastery indicators, this rocket indicator that uh, usually catches uh, follow throughs on these uh, upswings. But in this trend channel here, we see that going up, up, up. And if we look at our other indicators like the uh, ERI, I'll put that on real quick. So now we are we are very curiously getting a bullish ERI right here, you guys. So we've learned not to fight the indicators when we get an overlap and confluence on a TSI. That, the trend strength indicator is still red, though. So I think we do see some downside. Often the TSI follows the uh, ERI, as we can see. And we had a great signal back in this region. The ERI went uh, here and then red to green right around that 20 line and then the signal. So that caught this upswing there. And of course, we love this on the weekly charts uh, even more. So we'll just take a quick look at this. And the new ERI has these order blocks that show up showing lots of uh, order flow. Let me get Gary out of the way. And, uh, and again here on the, so just these two indicators alone are so powerful. So as you guys know, in our M3 and Tire Rich classes. So the early reversal indicator on the weekly basis, a bullish engulfing candle here, followed by the trend strength indicator going from red to green and above 20. Oftentimes that's when we'll be getting into the trade uh, and uh, legging in and usually followed by some additional capital to leg into and add to the position, build a position as these other signals fire. This is our signal indicator. All of these are different algorithms built by our partner joe who is a brilliant trader and programmer and somewhat of a mad scientist crypto trader and actually he a lot of what he does is our automated systems on the s p and other markets so um there's a lot of uh quant work behind these we're also getting a had a uh, bull sorry a bullish bell key and a bell on the weekly time frame and those are often great signals to uh, catch the bottoms. We caught that right as it came out of the, the trend, the red line here, which means no trend. And then back here in October, we started seeing signs of this market heating up. And certainly we saw the key in the bell. So we were entering this market in October, caught some great multi hundred percent swings on the altcoins based on these indicators. And so we have another bell, usually that first key in a bell after the red midline and i'll just open this up which means again no trend so we saw it again back here starting right around january of 2023 also when we were getting back in these markets caught the uh, sort of the key in the bell and entering here in january of 2023 so uh and as early as, early as december of 2023 actually but uh we caught that great run had that pullback here middle of summer caught another one there so these 
If you're not already a Crypto Mastery user, um, you can't say enough about these. You are definitely at a disadvantage by not having these. And I'm not rolling my eyes at you guys. I've got monitors all over, so bear with me here. And uh, to find out more about our Crypto Mastery indicators, you can go over to CryptoMastery.org. We have a special here for the next three days. You can get a free month and at $97 a piece, uh, $97 a month rather. And um, there are a six-month option where you get a free month. Okay, so uh, again, here are some of the indicators here. Once we start seeing more of them start firing, that's a good sign. And uh, the best way to trade these is go over to moonstream.io and grab the free crypto trader checklist right here. And I believe we have our new one loaded here. So all you have to do is go over and give us your name and uh, last name there. I think that might be optional. Just uh, and then give us your uh, email like this. And I'll give you that so that you guys can spam me all day long. Hopefully not. And then download the checklist here. So let's see. Uh, Alex says, hey, Alex, I just had a 27% winning trade last night while I was sleeping. Thanks to the indicators. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. They work. Trust them and let the profits ride. Awesome. Which coin was that, Alex? So, um, yeah. So anyone in our M3 and our Retire Rich and our coaching clients like Alex, uh, they know the power of these. So yes, this is our new version of the checklist. You guys are lucky. We've just redone this. And uh, let me open it up. Once you download it, what you want to do is uh, go into and open up the uh, folder here because it should be interactive. Now, let's see. Why is this not opening up for me? I'll download that one more time. And should uh, should see that. Well, okay. Murphy's Law, alive and well. Usually we have that open. So anyway, go ahead and download that and open up it as a PDF. And I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. And uh, there we go. The CM, the Crypto Mastery Trader Success Checklist. And it should be here. I got this opening up. There we go. All right. We have it ready for you guys. Here, down like this. And... There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so with this, I'll open that up a bit. When we start to see these things start to lining up here, as I mentioned, so ERI, if you check that box, you get a score on your trade. So on the score trader success checklist, now we have a one out of 21. So it used to be 19 indicators. We're always adding to this. And let's see here down the bottom, you can see your trading success score is one out of 21. And when you add that, again, I want to see the uh, TSI also going green. So as you see that, I'll just zoom in on that. Those two together is when I'll be legging into a trade. And so let's just go back to our chart here to show that. And on this weekly time frame where we caught that great signal. So right now in the trader success checklist, we've got our ERI, that early reversal indicator, accidental discovery, that has been our, our sort of North Star when to start looking at trades, especially on the weekly time frame. Uh, this also called the market top exactly back over here and here and here on the weekly time frame on Bitcoin. You see those. The confirmation would have been the trend strength indicator going red, going red, and then here on the signal going red, red. So we call those market tops exactly. And we also were getting back in on the monthly time frame. These work in all time frames, and that's when we knew exactly when to get into the markets because the only times this has fired on Bitcoin, the only four times has been at the market cycle bottoms. So let me just show you this real quick. Those of you that are new here, only four times in the history of Bitcoin. And I just need to get a long enough uh, runway on this to show you that. Yes, these charts sometimes are different in terms of the uh, sources. But here you go. You can see going all the way back to 2012, we had the first bullish ERI down in here, right as markets were recovering. That was the cycle bottom all the way to the top. And then we saw a second one here in uh, April of 2015. We saw one here in the bottom of 19, 2019. And then again, we saw the uh, bullish ERI on the monthly time frame right here in uh, January of this year, followed by the trend strength indicator going green. So on that monthly time frame, excellent uh, sort of unrivaled signal to get back in these markets. Also, we are looking at a few other things, if you recall. Uh, but uh, just showing you guys, if you're new, we have uh, we've opened up these classes to everybody. So those of you joining us and haven't seen these before, this is one of our secret weapons, and you can uh, add to that inside of the 
CryptoMastery.org area. I'll give you an idea. I'll tell you how to get them for free as part of one of our other programs here later on in this, uh, this uh, training. A um, couple things to take note of, though. We do have a bearish ERI, sorry, a bearish uh, TSI on the weekly time frame. So I'm watching this. Um, if we do get a break below 20, that would be a sign for me to start getting out of this market. I I'm going to set an alert here. By the way, you can set alerts on these indicators. So I'm going to hit a crossing uh, down and I want to be crossing down that 80 level, kind of like your average stochastic oscillator. And, uh, and in the case of these, I just put uh, weekly red and then sell. So that's a note to myself. If we see that crossing down below 80, those are those triggers above 20 and below 80 on this uh, time frame. So uh, where are we at with this? Let me jump back down to a uh, daily and go back to, you know, the uh, trader success checklist here. So right now we have a bullish ERI on the daily. Now we do want to wait for the daily close. So we, and I'll jump back to the news in a little bit here, but uh, we found some support on the 50 rising EMA, 50 day rising EMA. So this is interesting. We do need to see it close here and this arrow not to go away. Okay, so Bitcoin pulling back to that 50-day EMA. We'd likely see some support here. And is this a dead cap balance? Hard to say. I think that we're going to see some, some resistance as we push higher. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. But uh, what I'm also looking for is if the TSI goes green, if we get a green sign here on a closing daily basis, then I would buy Bitcoin. I would buy the bounce. And part of the reason is, again, we should see more inflows on these ETFs. Sometimes you can also draw these trend lines, which are are uh, often meaningful. So it's it's entirely possible we see that balance with some more ETF money coming in. And as the GBTC money filters back out of GPTC, has a few days to settle and then could go back into some of these other ETFs. However, I have been hearing that companies like Vanguard are not yet allowing people to buy their ETFs. So if you, those of you that have called some of our members called up Vanguard, said, I'd like to put some money in the Vanguard spot ETF. And they're saying we're not allowing people to do that yet. And they're pushing people to the futures, the cash settled ETFs, which is it defeats the purpose. So um, I, this is going to play out over six months or so before the money comes in. Now, the money is coming in. The bill market is still in play. I do think we are ripe for a correction. And uh, we'll hop over to this really quickly, as I've been saying for some time now, and we cover this in more detail in our M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, but 20% uh, pullback would be healthy back to the 38K level. You know, certainly 40K could be another level in the interim. Why do we say 40K? That was a support resistance level in the middle right here. Those round numbers do tend to act as support, but I think that uh, if we get down to those levels, we'll lose 40K probably at least wick down, if not go down to 38K. It's not a good thing, not a bad thing. It's just a thing. Markets move in cycles. And so we've seen that a couple of times here in the past. 20%, 28% pullback here. Um, quite a bit deeper if you widen that up a bit. If we go all the way back to this level, 35% pullback, even you know 38% from that recent resistance around that 25K 300 level, all important level. We watched very carefully all through that last cycle. But even from here, I got 28% pull. And then 22% here, we got so 20% here. So a 20% pullback would be not uh, outside the realm of possibility, if not likely. And also look at this big topping candle on the weekly basis, big topping tail, very, very bearish um, wick and candle that we had on last week. So pushed all the way up to 48K, 500, that golden pocket. And from there, though, the very bearish topping tail, bearish engulfing candle. So let's just hop over to the trade success checklist. And if we were using this on the uh, weekly time frame, we now have bearish side signals. So on the bullish side, if we had the ERI TSI signal line going green and a bell and in a green indicator, then we've got a really nice bullish sign to get in the market. Uh, and if there's a bullish engulfing candle, candle at support. So all of these add to a, a score down here, your trader success score, eight out of 21 uh, would be excellent. You'd be getting into that trade. However, if we start seeing the opposite and seeing some bearish signs now, Bob, I'm going to just go through the bullish ones real quick with you guys. Those of you that are new, we've got uh, a dozen or so 
uh, the volatility index going red to green. That's one of our other indicators. And then we have things about above trend uh, support, breaking above resistance. So it's unusual you would get a 10 out of 21 score on the positive side. But we also have one called the rocket, which is a very bullish signal that we've recently coded in there. So that is basically a large real body above support, which is essentially the launch pad, a 21 or a 50 day EMA. Sometimes it's support resistance and support uh, trend line and then the wick down below almost like lighting a rocket off so those of you that are members know that's one of our favorite indicators called the rocket on the launch pad and uh, and also the uh, new eri has buy blocks which show buying activity so we're, we're always continuing to improve this we have the um you know, touching the lower Bollinger Bands is another bullish signal. We use a modified Bollinger Band with the third standard deviation. That, that would be uh, modifying it from the standard two standard deviations to three. Uh, we'll look at that here in a minute. And then the last bullish signal here. Pardon me, guys, getting over flu here. And we have also three inside up is a bullish signal and then our radar. So our radar, when it's all green, multi-time frame radar, radar is a good at a glance signal that markets are going up or down. So, um, and then uh, our, our dynamic average to range, a couple other things breaking in and out of trend, trend uh, channels. So with that though, on the bearish example, and again, you can download this uh, checklist over at moonstream.io get a free copy of this, highly recommend using that. And even if you don't yet have our indicators, although that gives you a much bigger leg up. So now we should be back to a trend score of zero, right? So if we wanna go on the bearish side, if we see overhead resistance, that might be a signal that uh, we are going to head lower. So let's go back to our trend, ch uh, check the, the charts here <laughs> rather. So do we have resistance here? We did, so right in there, that would have been a negative sign for this. So if you do that, now we have a negative score on the trade. So that would be either sell or to possibly short. So a negative one on that trend score, the trading success checklist score. So you guys get the idea by now, the more of these that you have in the red or negative, the more likely to sell your positions and sell some of them. You know, I never recommend selling everything in a bull market. Always keep a moon bag but selling half or three quarters or 80% up to you. If we do get all red on the radar, let's take a look over at our radar signal and turn that on. We haven't had that on. It is actually on down here. So we're green still, mostly green on the radar on the uh, weekly time frame, but on the daily time frame, also still looking green because of this bounce. We were seeing some all red radars the other day. So uh, we may not be in that bad shape. So we will not turn this on. Any other bearish signals is this above the the uh, upper Bollinger Band. Let me just turn that on. It looks like I don't have it on uh, this chart. Let me top back down to this Bitcoin chart where we would have that uh, turned on if we want. And so basically up here, we could see that uh, we often people ask when to take profits, when to sell. And my best indicator when to sell on crypto is when it gets above that third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Do you see it can come up and touch if it closes outside of it, usually it's exhausting its run. And, and if you start seeing multiple topping tails above that Bollinger Band, uh, that is those are signs of heavy selling pressure in here, which we can usually see with an order block detector like that one. So we knew there was sell pressure up in here above that Bollinger Band, right up in here, that 48,000. I was telling you guys, let's take some profits here. Those of you who listened, hopefully we're happy that you did because certainly it's pulled back down to support. And now we're getting kind of this bullish ERI. So in the case of the trend checklist, had it been the other day, um, we would have checked that radar. But since where we are now, we actually have conflicting signals, right? So we have a... We have the, what do we have? The bullish ERI. So these are going to zero out. That's how you can use this trader success checklist. We have a bullish ERI there, but what else? We also have that resistance on a weekly time frame. which if we draw it on the weekly, it'll obviously still be there on the daily. It's just easier to see. So um, some support there as a plus one. And, uh, but in, and uh, yeah, so we have a positive on that, what did we draw on the other one? Hold on, I forgot, lost my place here. Kind of confusing when we have conflicting signals though. That's why the trader success checklist uh, is designed. 
Uh, where were we? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now look at that. Well, all right. So might have been on another chart. I've got to normally don't have two chart setups here. Uh, anyway, let's keep going. So basically back on this, if we're looking at the bearish side, we've got sort of this bullish though. We've got some we have support, we had some resistance, and that's the point where we're sort of in between these two areas. And so with that, so I'm not going to go through all the checklists. I want to get to a, some actual real-time TA. But so you can start to see how this is very valuable. If these start zeroing out, now we're at a zero score. You know, that helps you with when signals are incompatible or conflicting. Uh, generally, they are, are in alignment. So uh, let's just go through that bearish case, though. Now, we don't have a radar. We have some resistance here, so we check that. And uh, the radar not uh, giving us any signals on the Bollinger Band. We're not hitting upper Bollinger Band anymore. We were the other day. So again, the good take profit and sell signal. Also, the three inside down. That's another one you can look for. That's described there. And other things, some um, more advanced setups here, both bullish and bearish, ERIs, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing. There you go. So um, anyway, that's that uh, trade success checklist. Most often we're using it on the bullish side. All right. Any questions? Uh, Alex said his uh, his win was on CHZ. Let's look at take a look at CHZ. Um, all right. Nice. <clears throat> so let's see. So Alex, a nice ERI on this. All green on the radar. So this is a good example. Wait a minute. This is not the right one. CHZ. This says Hornet. I think Chili's is what we want. So it's different. Okay, good. Yeah, still though, look at that. Nice place to take profits. So well-trained, Alex. Hopefully you took, I'd say 80% of the profits here. Again, it's above that bullish uh, upper Bollinger Band. A lot of Bs there. We had an ERI back here last uh, on the 10th. So six days ago on the daily would have been a good sign to get in. We had the TSI going green. Great example, Alex. Thanks for bringing that up. And uh, we had that, so good for you for covering that. We, this was the confirmation right here. So if we did go back to our checklist, so we have, let's go all the way to the top, and we have an ERI, check. We had a TSI, check, right? So that TSI going up above this right there. So that's our secondary signal, good enough to get in. Has the signal line turned from red to green. We did have that, I believe, right in here, yes. Now these are all different algorithms. So when you layer these in, they become more powerful. So it's a good sign to add to the trade, build that position. So signal line, red to green, yes. So now we've got a good score in there as the trend indicator showing a bell. All right, hopping back over opening this up and uh, so we did have a bell as of two days ago so there we go we've got so the trend indicator showing a bell is it above the midline this green line down below and of course it is this shows a new trend on chz this is one to watch not financial advice but look this is how this uh is a nice coin here i probably would, would take at least half profits here and buy back as it pulls back within the bollinger band Okay, and uh, let's see if we see any other signs on that. Do we have bullish engulfing? Are we at support? We did have a bullish engulfing candle right there. So that would have been another sign. So now we are up to, I'd say, as five out of 21. Actually, I still have that bearish one turned on. So let me uncheck that, didn't we? Yeah, so we'll turn, turn that off. So we are at a six out of 21. Great score on the trade success checklist. I definitely would be in the trade at this point. All right, what else do we have? Do we have candle body at support? We did have a candle body above the uh, rising EMAs. So right there and at support from both of those. Uh, is it on a rising trend line? You could make that argument as well. So, you know, if you're new here, you're looking for those signals and how we read these. Uh, and uh, then we also have an all green radar. Did we already do that? I don't think we're even there yet. So great job on catching that, Alex, because we have... Uh, rising support trend line, yes. Was it breaking above resistance? Also, yes, right? So let's draw that here, there, okay? So this is an excellent example of, now we've got a 10 out of 21. So definitely a, a solid score on that. We will take a look at the ball index here shortly. And then uh, where's the radar? So we have green radar, so that's also good. Now, uh, do we have a three inside up? When you start looking at these, we do actually, uh, let's see, let me, we almost do three inside a bullish pattern. So you have a down pattern like that and the two inside candles are contained within the prior candle, 
Okay, do you see that? So here we have these two candles are contained within this prior candle. That's that's three inside up, and the and then another up candle closes. Okay, so it it, it closes above the second candle, which is number two. So you see that this. Okay, so it's not the three inside up. It would have had to have closed above this, but effectively with the third candle, it's still qualified. So there's some nuances there, and I'm going to give that a check mark anyway. It's a four inside up. That's not a thing. But essentially, you want to see the third candle closing above the second one. We didn't quite get that. We had this closing inside the second, but the third candle gives that bullish signal here. And then, of course, it took off and broke out. So from the ERI, legging into this trade here, a great example here, and then the TSI went green. So adding to the position here on this candle, um, adding to the position on this next bullish candle. So, you know, you're adding on strength and then the bell on this candle, and then that thing took off. Beautiful read. Chili's, yes. All right, great job, Alex. Um, are is there anything else? <clears throat> Do you guys see anything else we missed? The the dynamic average true range. Let's take a look at that. And that's another one of our custom indicators here. So the DTR, as we call it. Yeah, so also the average true range flipped from exit to entry. This is great for catching um, these uh, swing trading um, reversals, right? So sometimes there's some chop, so we always rely on our other indicators first, but especially after an extended move, so we see this pushing down, down, down in the dynamic average true range, you can also use that as your dynamic stop loss. So if you were long in here, green ERIs, and as soon as this went to exit, that would have been a stop out on a long trade or getting into a short all the way down, all the way down. And then here, once it went back to entry, would be another signal to go long right here and then close that long on the exit. So right here, we did see this entry point on the dynamic average true range right in here after, right after the uh, ERI. So this is becoming maybe one of the best examples we've seen in a long time for our indicators and the, the, um, uh, trader success checklist. Okay. So uh, is a price above long-term support trend line? And I uh, don't think so. Long-term is relative. We could almost do that. But at this point, we don't need any more reasons to be in this trade, you guys. How do you like that? <clears throat> so memorize these. And, um, you know, I'll give it that. That is, you know, a multi time frame, two weeks. It, it was above an upward trending trend line here and down here. So this is checking all the boxes here is price. Let's look at the downtrending trend channel. Uh, did we get one of those? Let me turn off the average true range there. And at this point, you don't need all of these. These are additional tools in your toolbox. You don't need to have all of this, all of these <laughs> lining up. So, um, you know, you could make the argument that there was a downward trending channel. We're using these a lot more this year in this bull run. So once it broke out of that and created a, a stall, a smaller upward uh, trend channel here. Now, we don't have the upper boundaries and lower boundaries yet, but right in here, yes, that qualified as a new trend channel. Sorry, guys, a new trending trend channel. I don't know, maybe we need another acronym for that. So there we have almost a perfect score. Now let's look at one more thing because the only thing we didn't look at here, uh, we didn't get the buy blocks. Uh, again, we don't need a perfect score. Anything over three or four on the trend success checklist is, is worth taking. Didn't get the rocket. Let's look at the vol index, by the way. The volatility index is uh, better on the shorter time frames. So let me do this and we'll go over here and do CHZ on the time, uh, four, sorry, the four hour time frame. Hey guys, I'm working without a net here, I'm trying to talk and move my mouth and do charts sometimes is a little tricky, especially when I didn't have time for my second coffee. You had to go shovel some snow here just today. Um, let's do this here and bear with me. I'm going to go up under my favorites and do the vol index. Now vol index is uh, excellent indicator that uh, is great for swing trading, day trading. So what this means, just in case you're a little rusty, uh, we normally don't see these on the dailies. When we do, we definitely pay attention. But just looking at the, how did I get that on there twice? Maybe that was already there. I'll remove it and I'll hide this. So the vol index, sorry, I need to butterfinger that one more time. This is kind of tricky to get these to show up how I want them to. Uh, all right, you know what I need to do? Just ignore the signal. There, that's what I want. 
So the volatility index, this is a volatility oscillator, um, very bullish when it comes up out of the red zone and it turns black. And also you can see that here, you can see that here. So if I open up the chart, we can see that was almost a perfect bottom on this four hour chart. See that? And if we layered in our other indicators like the ERI, typically they're in here as well. So sure enough, we had an ERI there, a second one in here, but uh, that vol index on the four hour would have been to me get in that trade. Did it do okay? Well, right back here when that confirmed would have been right there. And had a nice little 20% run on CHZ. So nice trade back here as well. Now this, interestingly, got us in potentially before the early reversal. Why we look for confluence would have dipped down again, but then on that ERI and then the bounce off of it. So the bounce being sometimes it will come back down and test that as support, but beautiful retest here on the vol index. So at this point, once you learn to really read these, the nuances with a, let me open these others, other ones up here. So we start to see our other indicators confirming. And, uh, you know, again, if we get two or more of them, I'm in usually. So we had that bounce right back in here, would have caught this whole move, 50% move uh, <clears throat> potentially on that using the volatility index. So uh, there you have it. Those are. Let me just hop over to the uh, other screen to show you something else. Uh, where did that go? I get too many screens open, you guys. Apologize here. And uh, here, this is the one. So basically, uh, when you go over to CryptoMastery.org, and you can learn more about these indicators. Guys, you're at a disadvantage if you're not using these. Uh, you heard from Alex. Any of our other members in here will swear by these. And uh, in the chat, I see a number of you guys, David, KS, uh, Rick. Um, I know you guys all rely on these extensively. So for anybody not using these, go read about this, CryptoMastery.org. We do these training classes every Tuesday where you can join and you get access to all seven of those indicators I just shared with you. The volatility index for overbought and oversold conditions. I will just hop back here to show you on the overbought side of things, also a good sign when things are time to get out, when the overbought goes from green down to black. Here, that was also when the market was topping out. That's the volatility index right in here. So when these are in confluence, would this have been a great time to sell and take profits? Absolutely. Drop down, drop down, push back up, and then our bearish ERI fired. But we were already out of this thing if we were following the vol index. Overbought and oversold conditions. So you get that, you get the ERI indicator, that early reversal indicator, our accidental discovery, and our North Star on catching these market reversals. That was that green and red arrow that I showed. The dynamic average true range, also your stop loss, dynamic stop loss indicator. Trend indicator, that's the key in the bell. The TSI is the trend strength indicator, the radar screener, and the signal line. That's all you need. You don't need any of these other things. Uh, we use them in conjunction with other indicators like Fibonacci's and trend lines, but you can see all the uh, reviews here, and that is not even a tenth of the ones we have. We've just been having the time to put them on the site. So go read about that and some examples. All right, there you go. So let's do this. Um, we kind of jumped past the news here, and I wanted to cover everything that we could. Let's see, where are the is the news tab right here? Okay, so... That's the GBTC deal. Um, you know, we'll, we can talk about the halving. We'd unpack that more tomorrow in my M3 Active Trader class. And uh, those of you that aren't familiar with that, you can learn more about that here where we do a deeper dive into all of what we're talking about here. Look at the macro markets, the DXY, and you get the indicators included. So if you want a little bit more handholding, you can learn more about that at moonstream.io slash uh, M3. And just, just letting you know, I see some new names in here. So I want you guys to be aware. Um, look, we're not here to sell you things you don't need. We're here to give you the tools to succeed in these markets. And we're being told we're top 3% out there of anybody. Uh, I would agree. And I'm fairly certain, highly confident anyone here in the M3 group or our inner circle uh, would agree. You get all these bonuses, cheat sheets, high probability candlestick patterns, dollar cost averaging worksheets. Uh, you can go read about that here. Uh, not designed to be a commercial, but uh, hey, look, we do this. This is the Bitcoin conference. Be hanging out with uh, Jay Powell. Kidding. 
Uh, you can read more about the M3 class. We do that tomorrow, and our Retire Rich class is on Thursdays. All a little bit different. You can read all about them at uh, the Moonstream.io website. So um, let's Let's more news, the uh, spot ETF. So interesting, Mark Yusko, we interviewed him for our uh, Future of Crypto Summit. Those of you that uh, were on that great interview with Mark, um, the, the video has been taken down. I don't know why, but let's see what Mark says. Mark is a very smart guy. He and uh, uh, Anthony Pompliano are partners, so both smart people. Why would he say unlikely to approve an ETF this year? ETF this year. Um yeah, I don't know. Let's unpack that a little bit because mostly because, as you know, in the M3 Trader Group, in our daily chat, I've been saying that um, the trade right now is to front run a ETH backed spot ETF. And because the even buying Bitcoin ahead of the spot ETF and the trade now, and we started to see ETH BTC push up is uh, getting ahead of that. So this is just Mark's opinion, but let's find out. Now, I agree it might take some time. And before we read this, here's my theory. Because Ethereum flipped from proof of work, where originally the uh, j Powell was saying that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not, not uh, considered securities because of the proof of work, well, then Ethereum changed to proof of stake. And they started burning tokens, which is great. But is there still an argument that, uh, and this would this would certainly shake up these markets. If Powell, not, not Powell, forgive me, Gensler comes out and says, hey, look, uh, Ethereum is no longer, is a security now. So if he said that, he would be wrong. But it would go to court and uh, it would shake up everything. So that's my theory. And, and that would delay an ETF. And ultimately, it'll take the courts to decide. Gensler's not throwing in the towel. He's not going to say, I'm fighting a losing battle. Whoever his boss is and whoever's pulling the strings uh, is telling him what to do. And so we've seen the uh, page out of the playbook here. He's not going to say, no problem. He's going to fight that. That's my, um, that is my uh, theory. So let's see what uh, Yusko says. Uh, let's see. Bloomberg ETFs, uh, Eric Bell. Chuna says 70% chance will be approved in May. Yusko disagrees. Interesting. Um, well, but not surprising. When has there ever been a clear narrative in crypto? Okay, so it's our job to unpack this. Uh, this guy's saying 50-50. Uh, uh, who who said that? Uh, Yusko said that? Let's see. Here we see broadly hostile. Yes, yeah, so this is back to Yusko. Broadly hostile towards cryptocurrencies and uh suggested by the agency's head, Gary Gensler, and uh, the day of the approval. Another obstacle, according to Yusko, says, oh, here it is. Look at that. So exactly as I just said, and I swear to God, I hadn't read that before. So, um, you know, I've got a pretty good read on these things. And so, you know, great minds think alike. She says right here, another obstacle says, Yusko says, the SEC may still regard Ether as a security, unlike Bitcoin, which is considered a commodity. Why? Because they flipped from proof of work to proof of stake. And so um, that that's a bit concerning. And so uh, we have to see, switching the topics to Bitcoin, Yusko argues approval of spot ETF is going to dramatically reduce the volatility, as I was saying. Uh, therefore, potential returns, mm, we'll see. You know, I think the reason it might reduce returns is that institutions, they like to play where there's bigger money, and those are the derivatives. I think we'll see the Bido and the Biddy mature in more volume there. And uh, so, you know, that that's a good thing if you want, you know, for us, let me just unpack this a bit. For us who are who have advanced, have an advantages at least with our indicators, trading options on Bitcoin, um, at least for, if for no other reason than hedging, but if we have, if we go back to that trade success checklist, right, and we've got a score, we've got a pretty good score of these, oops, don't pay attention to that here. And we've got like a six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 trade score based on our indicators. Um, you should be buying, not, not financial advice, but you could be buying options because I think we'll see a lot more volume on the derivatives, the futures ETF, the futures themselves, and the options. So it's not a bad thing for us. 
reduced volatility, reduced returns. We may just dip our toe in the water with higher leverage without using dangerous leverage on these exchanges. I will say this, my public service announcement for the day, uh, be very careful trading with leverage. Uh, those offshore exchanges that you hear all the other YouTubers promoting, they're promoting these not only because they get some of the trading fees, they also share in the funds if you get liquidated. And these companies like BitGet and Bybit, for sure their business model is partially to liquidate traders and uh, they can see all your stop losses, they can see your liquidation levels. So you don't want to go in and get use high leverage on these. The, the market makers of today are advanced AI algorithms. And remember that the best chess player in the world was beaten by an AI 20 years ago. Imagine what they have there now. So leverage is dangerous, um, but uh, with options, you're not subject to that intraday volatility. There are other risks, of course, but I'm just pointing out that um, this is interesting to me. And it's also a sign of the maturation, maturation of the asset, which uh, is true. Also a reason why that regression, log regression curve will sort of top out. You know, we'll still see pushes higher, but we, and the, the pumps will still happen, I think, but maybe less so uh, as this as asset matures. So um, a Bitcoin wasn't invented for day trading. Yusko says about Bitcoin, you know, that's why they added leverage to make it day tradable. And um yeah, it was Bitcoin's core was to allow us to exchange value without asking permission, a permissionless. So we've talked a lot about this. Um, okay, here's a, I would, you know, you can go to Cointelegraph, watch that video. Uh, we like Mark a lot. Uh, he was very gracious and gave us a great interview for the Crypto Summit. Um, we're going to be re-releasing that soon as a members only area. So you can go in and get access to those interviews. Uh, moving right along, BlackRock wants to follow Bitcoin ETF with an Ethereum. ETF marketing might not be so simple, so let's unpack this a little bit. Larry Fink uh, has firmly jumped ship. Uh, somebody was saying uh, in recent interviews uh, with Larry that you could basically say what he take what he's saying and stick it in Pompliano's mouth, and it would sound exactly the same. He has uh, clearly drink uh, drank the Kool Aid and is parroting a lot of what is being said by Pompliano, who has been saying this for a long time, and that's good. But um, but here's the thing. Uh, let's see what this says. BlackRock gets away. They can get away with anything. They've only had one ETF denied. So who is who's this article by? Uh, somebody trying to make a name for themselves, potentially. Ian Allison, no idea. Okay, so some of this, keep in mind, is clickbait. They want you to read the articles. They want you to click on their ads. That's how they get paid. All right, so the Larry Fink effect of Luke marketing drive for second spot ETF product underlying cryptocurrency Ethereum. So, so that is what I was saying, that uh, that's the next trade for lots of money. If you're familiar with the Wyckoff patterns to start accumulating Ethereum, allow the market makers to mark up price and then distribute at higher prices. Right now, Bitcoin is likely being in the distributed at the upper edge of its trend channel. So um, guys, we, uh, we're we coming up to an hour here. We did sort of jump back and forth between news and charting, but uh, we're going to keep it uh, varied. So we're always on the pulse of what's really happening out there. And uh, so let's unpack this quickly and we'll go back to some charts. So basically, and we'll look at some hot movers. Basically, I want to look at the obstacle. So let's see, 1,000 salespeople. You know, this happens over time, by the way. The ETFs have to then go sell to their clients. And I didn't touch on this on the Bitcoin yet, but let me just talk about that. We are a bit all over the place here today. But the reason that uh, Bitcoin likely will continue to pull back in this channel is even though the ETFs are approved, you know, they have to get out and do the road shows. All these other ETFs, now BlackRock has 2 billion aside, fine. They'll be able to raise more easily, but they they still have to get out, get on the phone, get on with their clients and, uh, and sell this. And so these are new uh, instruments. It's a new asset class for many of the high net worth individuals. They have to get on the phone and call the RIIs, the res, uh, Registered Investment Advisors. See, these guys have these whole armies of salespeople that they have to then brief on this. The salespeople have to get on the phone. Hi, it's Bob from BlackRock. I want to tell you about Bitcoin. And the other side, well, I hear that's scary and dangerous. And they say, no, now it's not because we, you know, this, this takes time. And especially with the older demographic. Uh, many of you here, by the way, who are part of the older demographic, aging male baby boomer, um, you're early and kudos to you. 
because the bulk of the market uh, that has money, just doing simple math, the millennials who are more Bitcoin friendly, they don't have the money. They're not moving the market. Those of you that I'm coaching with privately uh, fit that that demographic, and um, you know, are have you know six figures in that range or more in the markets. Those that that demographic that mark are moving retail traders to have the potential to move. Certainly, uh, the mass adoption of the smaller wallets it all helps. Point is that um, a lot of that market uh, with the larger retirements and they've been investing longer, they haven't come in yet. But it's going to take some time, and I think we see that really starts happening on this the, the bottom edge of this curve. Again, coming down on this 35K, 38K region, more likely this 38K here, but I've drawn examples. We unpack a little more detail in M3, the M3 class tomorrow. Again, uh, go to moonstream.io slash M3. You can learn all about that. So anyway, trying to give you guys a broad picture here. And um, so an Ether ETF, I do agree that will take longer, uh, but we don't know. Um, you know, the the courts have shown their frustration with the SEC and Gensler with playing games with all this. So likely, if not, if not um, more probably, there's there's case law now that, you know, they don't have a leg to stand on except for that uh you know is eth now a, is eth now a back to a commodity because it's proof of stake not proof of work uh, no one's really talking about that but um uh, i think that'll become a an issue and so we'll see but for now i think we still see an ethereum pump up higher let's see selling an ether etf could present a conundrum to issuers it says uh, investors have just bought yeah it it, it may cannibalize it may cannibalize the uh, Bitcoin ETF. So maybe there's not so much incentive. Um, practical needs by the portfolios. Why would they need another diversification tool? Interesting. Sure. Let's see. Thing about it, especially Prince of Chichi explaining the benefits of Bitcoin. I'm just skimming this, you guys. Primary throwing Bitcoin and how's its price history. Uh, yeah. So I think the big narrative here, though, is and the argument for Bitcoin is it's been the biggest outperforming asset over the last 10 years. So institutional money managers, that's all they really need care about. And they will start adding an allocation, 1%, 2%, eventually 5% to Bitcoin as that, uh, that's been proven. Ethereum is newer. And I think that's the challenge because as a diversification tool, um, you know, that's risky. But uh, the sharp ratio, this is the next comment. This is something that money managers use to show the, you know, the validity of their program. So I have a friend, Scott Phillips, who's created an excellent uh, trade algo. His sharp ratio is it was 1.8. It's very good. And these are these numbers that the money managers rely on. They don't just look at uh, bullish engulfing candles and trend lines. They are looking at over time, how to diversify, but over time, key word there, because you know their track record is judged over time, over years and years and decades and decades for the funds. Okay, so with this, with Bitcoin, you put a little bit in the sharp ratio doubles. So that's why Bitcoin is going to be remain the market leader. So it's an important point, and uh, it becomes interesting as how mainstream financial institutions like BlackRock a market an ETF to a trade fi investor. A lot to unpack here. I don't know. We won't go, but here we already said if they already had one and a half to 2% of Bitcoin in the portfolio, are they going to want to like add Ethereum? I don't know. You know, that's not going to be as attractive, especially with that risk of it being classified as a commodity again. All right. Uh, BlackRock, however, already started diving in the complex world of tokenization. So this is where things get interesting. So tokenization, one of the things that we are identifying as a emerging market in our retire rich inner circle class, where we focus on um, distressed assets, long term future Netflix and Amazons, the longer term trades, the future high flyers and uh, those industries like metaverse, NFTs, um, you know, um, NFTs, metaverse, what else? Um, tokenization, all of these coming together, virtual reality. And uh, all of that coming together and tokenization of real world assets is a big one. And so uh, that is where, so Larry Fink is starting to dive into that, which really allows them 
to open up their other ETFs and tokenize their other real world assets like uh, real estate, et cetera. So very interesting times we live in. And um, and smart contracts, of course, in DeFi. So uh, can of worms, the SEC is an opinion of that. So we also don't know where that's going to land with the SEC. Um, and uh, okay, here we go. Guys, I, I swear I haven't read this mentioned before, but I've been talking about it for months here. And right here, let me just make this stand out. A key dif differentiator between Bitcoin and Ethereum now is how the latter moved away from the energy sapping proof of work system to a green or validator. Well, what they're leaving out, and I'm sure they're getting toward is, is, uh, is it now a commodity and no longer a security? Um, they're talking about the marketing side of things, but this is, this is a big red flag. I'm sure the SEC is talking about it. So um, that's why you want to be overweighted in Bitcoin versus Ethereum, in my opinion. But what are we talking about? Probably Bitcoin. Yeah. She, so she keeps raising her estimates, by the way. I saw her at the Bitcoin 2022 conference, sat front row with her and Michael Saylor talking about how Bitcoin could go to a million dollars. Now it's a million five by 2030. Uh, seems like the more she invests, the higher her target goes. And that would be a 3,000% gain. Is this possible? It's possible, but I don't see that. I um, was I was shooting for the midpoint of her million dollar target, say 500,000, which we could hit in the next cycle. That would be around 2028. So half a million Bitcoin in the next cycle, potentially million dollar Bitcoin by 2030. We do have the 10 reasons which could explode Bitcoin price that we unpack in detail in the retire rich class tomorrow. The first one is just hit. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, but Kathy Wood, permable, I would take that with a grain of salt. And so let's just see, she got approved by the F Bitcoin ETF and she's bullish on that. I'm trying to see what is she, okay. She's not really talking about Ethereum at all here. Um, so let's move on, you guys. I don't want to spend too much time on this. That's the big story. Uh, Grayscale moving money out to sell more Bitcoin, as we talked about. Uh, Bitcoin traders eyeing support of 40K. As the ETF contrarian bets, you know, it's not contrarian, you guys. All these people, what are they talking about? This is, we talked about that uh right here i want to get back to this chart because well this is a good one too so basically and uh we've got huge bearish divergence by the way with the stochastics rsi and the money flow going down and bitcoin holding price so that's why i've drawn this area arrow back down to dip you can see that here and here uh also that macd is topping out but the chart we were looking at here shows why we should pull back uh, we've been riding this upward trend in channel. We every time we hit the upper mark, it was sort of became it broke down into a new trending channel, broke up out of it, right? So broke out of this trend channel here, topping out here, pulled back, topping out. So we see that hit that golden pocket exactly. So I think we should pull back down into 38k. Uh, now, if we if we lose 38k, guys, we'll go to 32. Uh, I do believe that this should retest at some point. However. We have some very bullish targets, and we talk about those more in the M3 class tomorrow and uh, and why we'll get there and how we'll get there. But this 32K support level is so important. All the way back, if we extend this out, when in doubt, zoom out. So this was prior resistance, flipped as support back in January of 2021, came back, retested support, early part of 2021, ran up to the top here, um, lost support back here in May of 2022. This is when I was forecasting the 16.5 as the low publicly on Facebook. Uh, Dylan LeClaire, editor of Bitcoin Magazine, mocked me. He said 30K was the low. Well, we can see who was right there. Came all the way down to 16.5, spent a few months there. But the point is that uh, we came out of this trend channel swinging and um, came all the way back up. Blew right through 32. We hit, we was resistance once and twice, third time. Usually we break on the third or fifth attempt. We broke through on the fifth, sorry, the third time, but we haven't retested 32K yet. So if we do a quick Fibonacci on that from the market cycle low, incidentally, what does that show us? Uh, it doesn't really give us a clear signal. 
all the way to that high, uh, you know, that would put uh, the retracement. Another reason 38K could hold is it's right around that 30, that 50% retracement. If I draw this exactly to the wicks, um, no, not even doesn't really overlay there. So uh, anyway, doesn't always work. Uh, Fibonacci is on the upside of what we're watching and uh, that case uh, where we, uh, how I, again, if you want to know where the next Bitcoin top is, by the way, uh, join us for the M3 class tomorrow because I have that already laid out on this chart right here, right there, and why I think that'll happen. Okay, so let's see. So again, th this is why pullback is going to be healthy back to 38K. We can zigzag, zigzag. We could push up again to retest these prior highs, 43. We could push up again to the golden pocket, 50K. I would be selling that would be ETF money, but we can clearly see here on the weekly time frame that uh, 43, 44K as resistance and uh, has not closed above there. So we would need to see on a weekly time frame closing above 44K to be able to go up to that 48K, 50K region. I do believe we, we continue to lose steam on this and pull back and, uh, and we start seeing the Bitcoin ETFs holding off on their buys. Uh, all right. Uh, see, you. I know who that is, David. Thank you, Cryptodamus. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, lately you guys have um, uh, been calling me Crypto Domus. Again, I don't know. You know, we we do, we are very good. I give a lot of the credit to 10,000 hours of staring at charts, but our indicators that we have created. And so if you don't use those already, you're at a disadvantage. To get to, get Go over to CryptoMastery.org to get a copy of those. Let's do this, you guys. Uh, let's take a look at the top movers. We always do that every week just to see if we can catch some big movers here. And, um, and we can uh, overlay with our indicators here. I'll just check in the chat, see if there's any questions. If you guys have any you want me to look at, please do. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you like this, uh, please definitely like and subscribe. We'll continue doing these. And then go to Moonstream.io and sign up for these weekly classes. So you can do that uh, on the moonstream.io website. I'll just show you if you are watching this on YouTube replay, a lot of you do. We'd like to grow the community. So go ahead to subscribe, share it with people, go down to the free classes and reports down here. You can sign up for these live weekly classes here, as well as our weekly newsletter that we put out every Monday. So you can sign up for that. Also, this report I released a year ago and just revised the past and future for Bitcoin. And also you can download the free report, the five biggest mistakes crypto investors make when trading crypto. But right here, you can sign up for the live classes. Come and ask your questions. And we, we do this live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. There you go. Okay, uh, back to the uh, top movers. And let's see. So a couple filters on here. I like to see a minimum sort of uh, volume, 87 million. Maverick protocol, not familiar. We can look at this. Let's see what this Maverick protocol is. Every now and then, we did find ATOR right when it was breaking out. So we got a good one there watching these and using the indicators uh, as well. So this is kind of a new coin, interesting, breaking up into a price discovery zone. So Maverick protocol is available on crypto.com, it looks like. Now, uh, where else? Uh, Mav is a symbol and uh, M-A-V-E. That's pretty much the only place, crypto.com. So it's new, as you can see. But look at this, you guys. We saw a rocket indicator down here. Uh, let me turn on the ERI. Uh, let's see, let me do this. I got to do this. And then I'm going to add all of our indicators all at once. The crypto mastery indicators with the click of a button. Boom. There you go. Beautiful. So we are on a daily time frame. Uh, let me get the rocket added because the rocket is new. And uh, let me see. There you go there. All right. So um, with this, let me open this up a bit. Interesting chart, isn't it? So we had uh, ERIs all along the bottom here. One of our new strategies is to adding to positions on these early reversal indicators and all these pullbacks. We had a rocket indicator here. We saw this break the 21 and 50 day EMA back here. We're also a bullish sign, bullish engulfing candle. Our ERI triggered here. Also had a TSI go green. So all of the signals here were triggering in our favor. And the back in here as well, that vol index. Look at that, you guys. Right here, right in that same zone, right here with an ERI, the vol index. We had a TSI, all of our indicators going green. Beautiful. That's how we use these. And so, you know, this doesn't look like much, but look at this. Had you got in back here, we'd up, would be up 200% by now. 
Okay, so we are working on a scanner, by the way. It's going to take a little longer, a little bit trickier. But uh, now, now understand these are margin. Crypto.com can use margin. What you'd want to wait for, if you want to wait till the end of the day, you want to see it close above this 0.57 range. If it sells off here, like it did back in this range, then it's not, it hasn't broken the new high. If it can close above here though, then it's in price discovery zone and this thing should continue higher. If you look at it on a weekly time frame, you know, this probably pulls back here. It's above the Bollinger Band. So I would say be careful with this one. This will likely sell off at the end of the week. Uh, and not saying it has to, maybe by the end of the day, and then it prints above and then it continues higher. That's certainly possible. But uh, above its upper Bollinger Band, these candles are a different color because we've got the vol index, vol index on. And there's a little advanced nuance you guys may not realize. So the, the candles change color so you can use it without having this have to take up space on your screen. And uh, so, right. So when the price gets into, I don't know that I want to get into all this, um, the candles turn green when it's in overbought territory. And uh, they're black inside with the color around them when they're in the middle zone. All right. And then they turn red when they're oversold. So with this on the vol index, you don't have to be looking at it. You just see, hey, this is oversold. And then it goes to black, meaning it's back in the black. So this is a bullish sign. And this was a doubly bullish because our rocket indicator fired right on this right here. Okay. So lots of nuances on these indicators that we unpack every week here. So it's not uh, rocket science, but uh, multiple layers of this. So anyway, that's interesting. What I'm going to do... I'm going to turn off the vol index here just so we can see the candle colors. And that's what you guys are mostly used to. But again, Bollinger Band 3BB, uh, we tell you how to modify that in the M3 classes. Essentially, just change it to a third standard deviation. Uh, low volume, though, this is a really low volume coin. Be careful with these. The volume not even registering and uh, mixed on the radar. So uh, real quick, I want to hop over to one that we did also recently land on the hot movers, uh, Say. Say is uh, looking good here, mostly red on the radar, maybe topping out. So that's interesting. These are some charts I already had open. Uh, ICP has been on a tear. Let's see. What do we see with ICP? And I don't have an ERI on this one. Let, let's stick to the uh, main chart and go back to MAV. So that's MAV. You guys uh, keep an eye on that, though. If, if I'm going to put an alert on breaking above 0 0.70 and to see, does this thing stay above? that level and is in price discovery zone okay so price discovery zone no sellers above that can really take off no sellers means no selling pressure more buyers the market makers don't know where there's resistance there's no ceiling on that i do like this nice bottoming pattern on this uh, chart here so if we draw that kind of cool I, I do like to see that that means buyers and sellers are in equilibrium and I like to buy into strength. So that's pretty cool right there. All right. You know what? I'm going to add that to our watch list. So we can take a look at that next week. I'm going to add it to my watch list. I like the name Maverick. I used to be uh, in a group called the Maverick Business Adventures. And that was a kind of a fun uh, fun time. So anyway, let's, uh, let's close that. We'll go back into the uh, top movers. I don't see any chats. Do you guys have any chat requests? We'll look at those too. Let's see, NFT Worlds, um, circulating supply, very low volume though. Even 87 million is low. Well, this is 159K, not going to bother with that. This is 106. Uh, this is Santos FC fee fan token. Seems a little too niche for me. Giant Mammoth, 3 million, too low. 50 million on Multibit, kind of an interesting name. Here's Chili's, by the way. So Alex uh, nailing that trade using our indicators. Now it's on the big mover, so we'll pull up. We already looked at Chili's. We'll look at one more time with fresh eyes because that's good to keep an eye on. And let's see. What do we have here? So Multibit. So these low volume are newer, uh, newer uh, coins. Let me just double check that. M-U-B-I. looks like it's been around for a little bit longer, but crypto.com usually has a pretty long track record. If we wanted to see and just double check how long it's been around, you can check some of these other exchanges. And But it's it's new. So basically, 
let's come back all red on the radar so i wouldn't uh, touch that it's on mexc been around a little longer what i would it's interesting though the radar yeah the indicators you're going to get slightly different signals on different exchanges by the way different amounts of volume what i do like about this is and this is tradable potentially we had eri tsi we're just going green on the signal back above this 21 day ema I think this is this has momentum behind it. It's increasing volume a little bit, but not like back in here. It does has a have a history of breaking out. So here's what I would call your attention to on this. If you're trading on MEXC and you wanted to play this, it's 22 cents. Uh, let's look at what its personality is like. So these coins all have their own personality. Well, I'm seeing a couple things. Bullish engulfing candle, it goes up. I'll come back to this. This one was a fake out in all fairness, but let's go back here. Bullish engulfing candle shot up and let's see, but not always. Bullish engulfing didn't quite stay up, didn't quite stay up, but here we had a bullish ERI. So the, that's the problem with these low volume coins is it's hard to predict what they're really going to do, but another bullish engulfing back here. So what, what you have adding up on the trade success checklist though number of things. You have ERI, that's a bit far out to count it. We have the uh, up just above the 21-day EMA, we have a bullish engulfing candle. That's what I like about it. We're getting a key and we might get the bell tomorrow. Signal line going green. So on the trade success checklist, what do we have that? I'll say this is a plus one and this is a plus one, three. So we have four kind of a four, maybe a five on the on the score with the bullish engulfing candle. So, um, you know, this is a trade I would take. $1,000, see what happens. This thing could pop. What happened before? Not financial advice, you guys, but, you know, look, this thing can, this thing can push up here. What happened last time? You know, nice. Wow. Okay, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Uh, if you bought in this region... At the top of the bullish engulfing candle, so the, the weighted till the trade, the daily, this is back in December of 2023, not too long ago, last month. And above this recent resistance, right? So if you knew about this and you bought it right there, it went up 250%, as high as 285%. If you got it a little lower, that dramatically increases, you know, 400%. So... Um, I would wait till the end of the day to see if this closes, if this closes with a nice bullish candle and a hammer, um, potentially this is a rocket. Uh, it needs to touch on this 21, but I, let's just say, I like this, I like this, um, setup here. And if you wanted to put a bars pattern on it, you know, uh, you can do that. And so what do we have there? I'm not saying that this happens, but let's say it shoots up here another 200%. I'll put an alert here and just we'll cover it next couple days, next week. There you go. Those of you who like to play the, uh, the gunslinger game, let's just say if it gets above 75 cents, then you would sell, take profits. Potentially. This is a note to myself. This is just paper trading fun. Okay. But uh, that's why, you know, we like these little DGEN coins that are on the hot movers. I, you know, I used to be a momentum day trader. And uh, now if you're U.S. based, can't probably get this easily. It's uh, on the MEXC. As, uh, as of now, I think you can still trade without a KYC on the MEXC. All these algorithms, those of you who have it. I know some of you are on MEXC. Uh, and um, okay, well, let's keep going. So I'm going to leave that chart up. That's kind of an interesting one. Any any requests, you guys? Nobody so far. All right, let's keep going. So here's Chili's. We already talked about that. Uh, our signals caught that. Alex made some profit. Good job at Gold Star to Alex for catching that. I'm not sure. That's one we've talked about and may have been on your radar, but uh, you caught that nice little pump. All green on the radar, by the way. Uh, incidentally, uh, this radar is so good for knowing when to get into trades and depending on your time frame. So here what we have is a four hour, so 240 minutes, four hour, daily, weekly, monthly, all green on the radar. Now, if you want to take a little longer term for the bull market, you can adjust these in settings. Again, this is part of our crypto mastery 
indicators that you get when you sign up for at cryptomastery.org. So basically you can come in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change out the four hour and I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go daily. And uh, let's see, I messed that up. I'm going to go daily and then I'm going to go uh, weekly and I'll go monthly and uh, quarterly. So you can do it that way too for a little bit longer time frame. And that would be your signal if you wanted to hold on to this a bit longer. And uh, so the monthly is still red. Sorry, the quarterly is still red, but we're a little ahead of this. And I would imagine uh, that uh, this thing continues uh, higher. And so let me get rid of that, get rid of that. There and there. So basically on this daily time frame, ERI, TSI, signal line green. This looks good to me. And what do we have, you guys? What we've been talking a lot about in our M3 Active Trader class, one of the biggest changes we're going to make in this market here uh, and um, is the uh, using these trend channels. So as soon as you can identify a new trend channel, that's time to sort of get in these trades because usually it'll retest, but often it'll trade in these trend channels all the way up, zigzag up and up and down. You can adjust these as you go. They will widen on occasion. But as of now, at the top of the trend channel a little bit, so take profit zone up around this level, but on any pullback, I think very likely this continues higher. Also looking very good on the weekly time frame. Again, all green on the radar for the midterm time frames, four hour daily, weekly, and uh, monthly. And so, and one of my favorite crossovers is that 21 week crossing the 50 week EMA. So very bullish. So Chili's looking good. You know, I'd say... Uh, you know, take profit on that. Some of it, Alex, if you're still in the trade, but uh, adding to that position on pullbacks, you know, we do have a macro trend resistance possibly in here as well. But um, I like the fact that's coming up. So this buy zone is is looking pretty solid there. When the 21 week crosses the 50 and you get price action up in here, it usually pulls back to retest that uh, resistance and then it goes higher, right? And we've seen that a dozen times, pop out, retest, then goes higher, okay? Chili's looking good. Anything else? I'll do one more, you guys. We're coming up on an hour and a half. Again, if you're watching the replay, like and subscribe to the channel so you can learn about these. And uh, we're, at some point, we're going to live stream these. So it's in the works. Ribbon Finance. So uh, let's see. Very low volume. I'm not going to even look at that. Let's look for some in the range. We'd like, like to see these. Uh, you know, Bora, 134 million. We're in the range. Everything else is pretty low. You know, Chili's 290 million qualifies, 130 millions toward the low end. Uh, what is this blur down here? NFTs and collectibles. Um, okay, you know, I'm going to do two more. And is this Board of Finance? What is this? Uh, this is, no, I think it's NFTs and other gaming. The narrative of gaming is going to be huge. The, look at that candle. This. So here we've got a TSI crossing over into green. This looks very good, you guys. It's on... Uh, according to our signals, it's on BitGet, Crypto, Gate.io, Bybit, Kraken. If you're in the U.S. and you want to, let's see, scratch that. That's something else. Got to be careful with these symbols. A lot of them look the same. So Crypto, BitGet, OKX, and Gate.io. Um, big candle here. Does it sell off? I think the Bollinger's probably breaking the top of that. Not quite. It's got a little room to go. This is bullish, you guys. We have a TSI. Um, we call this the four kings, ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. We don't have the bell yet. We have, though, our signal line going green. That's bullish. And we have the key setting up saying a new trend is likely forming. And if I zoom really far in on this, we've got this red line going to green. Guys, you might want to put Bora on there on your list. Uh, looks good for a pump to me. I would be careful with these offshore margin exchanges. They can pump and dump, but we... Have We have all four. We almost have all green on the radar. Looks pretty good to me. And of course, our ERI all the way up back here called uh, called an excellent entry back here. Yeah, ERI, TSI went green, signal and bell. You guys, when you get those four, the four kings, it's, it's go time. You know, these are probability indicators. The more that are in line, the more likely it goes in that direction. So we don't rely on one, but here we had the ERI goes green. This is the ERI oscillator, by the way. We Just to show you, this is not some silly arrow. There's a lot going on in here. Keltner channels, um, there's oscillators within certain time frames. Uh, I'm not going to talk and tell you the secret sauce. We show you that for those of you that don't believe it can be as easy as an arrow. 
I'll hide it, but uh, you can see these lines, they line up. But you, we, we use the confirmation. There are some missed signals in the middle, not missed, but because they didn't confirm. The TSI is the confirming. So again, ERI, check. TSI, green and above 20, check. Signal, green, check here. So we're layering into these positions here, next day, here, next day, here, and then the next day, the bell. So often these play out over four days, and then we get in. These red arrows we discount because they're not confirmed. The TSI is still green and above and up in here above 80. Okay. The confirm on the cell is bearish ERI, TSI red below 80. If you just remember those two things, that's all you need with these indicators. You can improve the accuracy by using the signal in the other one, but those two alone are so strong. And right back here, ERI, TSI, could get in that trade, ride it all the way up. So what are we seeing? We had the ERI back here, but we're back above the 21 and 50. That's where you jump over to the trade checklist. And then here, the TSI signal and bell. Okay, so you guys got it. All right, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Steven, welcome. And uh, what we'll do next. So we said speed round. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to put that on the radar for Bora. I'll do one more. And we talked about uh, Blur. Blur is not on the radar yet. So 853 million on the market cap, 650 million in volume. This is definitely one we want to know about. Blur on the uh, super charts. Let's take a look what we have. And incidentally, to, to instantly load all of our indicators, all I have to do up here is inside of the templates. I have that saved. So I have one hour and four hour template. I've got a day trading template. I've got the four horsemen here. And let's see, that's this one. Bingo. Okay, I was loading the wrong one. So the four horsemen right there. Uh, why did it load Bitcoin though? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, because it was set to, it was set to uh, load that as part of the template. So we'll go back to Blur. Now Blur is on Coinbase. Interesting. So look at this chart, you guys. Um, we nice upward trend. And now this is good old fashioned TA. You don't necessarily need our indicators. I'll add them back, but look at this nice riding the 21 day EMA all the way up, came down, tested the 50. We talk about this in the M3 class. The, this is like being on the ice. If you're on, this is the thin ice here on the orange. The green is the thick ice. You don't want to go out on the lake if you're just on the thin ice. Why? What can happen? You might, might be okay for a while, but then you break down through the ice and you're drowning. Fortunately, the thick ice is below us. Came broke below the thick ice here, got back above both of them. So that's very good. We now have a trend line support on this blur breaking up into a new high area, potentially price discovery. Uh, actually, I take that back. When in doubt, zoom out, but still into a resistance area. So the local top back here, you know, I think this is probably going to give it some trouble. But we do see one of our favorite indicators, a cup and handle, kind of a sloppy cup there, but the handle... You know, so if we could get above this level at 77 cents, let's call it 84, 85 cents, then I would want to know about blur and uh, possibly to run much higher. So I'll just put that in the the uh, buy. I just put buy question mark, question mark. Let's layer in back into the indicator, see what else it's telling us. Showing a bit overbought here. If we look at a weekly time frame, let's see. Um, getting a bell, but I on the daily, I still like this chart pattern. If I re remove all the drawings there again, it does. It's a nice looking chart, though. I think it goes sideways and then it breaks out and it takes off. I like this chart. Uh, a little bit overbought right now. I wouldn't chase it, but I will add it to our watch list so we can take a look at it next week. All right, guys, we covered quite a lot of ground today. That's all we have time for today. I would encourage you to join us for our M3 Trader class tomorrow. You can find out more about that at the website uh, moonstream.io slash uh, m3 sorry as uh, m3 right there like that moonstream with an n and um that's every wednesday so it includes it includes the crypto mastery indicators uh, you have access to me on a daily basis i'm updating every day in a private signal chat with trade picks, with uh, news unpacking a little deeper dive than we do here today. Live weekly classes again on Wednesday. Uh, you can chat, you can ask questions to me and the other members. There's a members area. With uh, Google Docs, like the dollar cost averaging worksheet, a portfolio tracker. This is for your active trader. If you really want to dive into these markets and trade the swings like we are showing you today, um, dive into this and get signed up for that. It's now we have it on a monthly 
payment uh, only two ninety seven a month. You get the indicators for free, and you get a whole lot more. You guys know one trade or getting out of one bad trade can more than pay for that. So go ahead and read that uh, over at moonstream.io slash M3 uh, and get some uh, video. You also get a bonus live coaching session with me that uh, I only offer every now and then. So very um, booked up with coaching clients. But um, anyway, we do this. We live, breathe and sleep crypto. So if you are an active trader and you want to really tap into my knowledge and experience and these indicators, I do that and our growing community in the M3 Active Trader group, which uh, is the best out there, in my opinion, uh, in the best community that uh, we found and seen that we've created it to be so. So anyway, cheers, everybody. Have a great week. And I'll see you guys, the rest of you this week, either in the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow or our Retire Rich class. Uh, that is invite only. Uh, and you can't find a link for it. I think there is something on the website if you'd like to go learn more about that but uh we don't really talk about that we are about to re-release it though so get on our email list and look for some emails but uh and there's more information in a google doc for retire rich you have to email us if you want to know more about that uh that is a longer term program for those of you that are for hodling we're updating our 2024 investment thesis looking for distressed assets future high flyers and in these industries will cover ai crypto crypto exchanges metaverse regulations nfts infts that's the next generation of nfts there's a, a crypto gem in that market that we like icos future of dows crypto futures uh, crypto cities multi-chain dapps etfs DeFi ETFs, future of DPIN. If you don't know about DPIN yet, we're talking about DPIN, emergence of the social web three and future of GameFi. So these are, again, these future Netflix and Apples. We're identifying them early. We've had multiple 100%, 200% winners in this group. So we do have trade recommendations. We had some starting as early as September and October that have gone up 100%, 200%. I want to say 300%. I have to check, but a uh, great portfolio in there in the inner circle. Invitation only. You have to email us at moonstreamvip at gmail.com if you'd like more information. Okay. Something for everybody. Uh, and if you are looking for more one on one, I have a limited a number of coaching spots remaining. And this is not to sell you guys anything, this is to help you at whatever level you're at. Click on this button at moonstream.io and you can find out more about this. A couple of coaching students here today. Uh, and there are some uh, there are some testimonials we can send you and reviews. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you. Welcome to the class here if you're new. See some new names here. So uh, appreciate you guys and your time. If you want to join us every Tuesday, again, you can do that here noon Eastern. So stay safe, every, everybody. And those of you buried in snow, I feel your pain. I've got some more snow shoveling to do. We own the building, so I've got to shovel the snow for our tenants downstairs. <laughs> and uh, It's good to get out from the computer every now and then. Okay, got to go, guys. Bye-bye.